which all of you will have to get involved for us to feel the pulse as well as provide directions for the next few years to assist our beloved bishops in plotting catechetical ministry in our dioceses, parishes, and other communities of faith. And that is a whole morning session here in the conference room. So without further ado, let us welcome Father René de Guzman, SDB, and Ms. Cristeta Bob Lopez. Good morning, everyone. Uh, my part is just simply to introduce uh, the owner of the Father, which has been on social media. However, um, we thought of uh, giving first ourselves uh, time to do some reflection on the uh, social communication and the evangelization of what we call the Faith Foundation of uh, Communication. Because uh, there is a danger uh, to be given among us activists. Um, <coughs> social communication um, generally stated simply as technology as instrument for the ministry. But we believe really that uh, we go to the roots of uh, communication when we respect it of the faith. Just to contextualize us in uh, evangelization, uh, the three fathers uh, uh, came out to, uh, to realize that the evangelization is not starting all over again, as the word suggests. But to continue the work of evangelization that Jesus and also the Spirit Christians did, but uh, we bring the Spirit, the Spirit of uh, the Apostles, uh, where um, there's this urgency, enthusiasm, involving the words of Paul, uh, of Paul, all to me by the Christian Gospel, and the Christian Gospel of the Lord and system in our system. And during the, uh, um, as I mentioned in the previous conferences, uh, the beginning of the season, uh, bishops of America, Latin America, Asia, and uh, Africa thought that uh, they were really existing just for the season to help solve the problem of the world, which, which was which is the Christianization. Then, uh, almost in the middle of the uh, season, the uh, bishops presently realized that no, the evangelization is for everyone because of the change social, cultural, economic, civil, and religious scenarios. And uh, in the, so the, practically you can see the time fight for the church, what um, Paul VI, John Paul II, and uh, Benedict were uh, uh, trying to infuse the church and the And uh, here what was emphasized is uh, to live our communitarian experience of faith. So the evangelization is a good things to revive uh, our, our, our faith, but more so to um, in this communitarian aspect, the Christian aspect, um, in a good way, and then all um, 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 duty, the famous words of uh, Pope, uh, Pope John II, that he came out in um, Haiti, at the same time also earlier in Poland, and he was either on the instrumentals and on his expression. So, at that signal, we can summarize three uh, main ideas that uh, the Seal Fathers brought up. One is that the Holy Spirit is the primary agent of evangelization. Therefore, evangelization is essentially a spiritual matter. It is the word of the Spirit. And with that one, and the Spirit works in us, the Holy Spirit works in us. The second is that uh, we need to be confronted. We will, we feel that we have to be converted to Jesus Christ, this conversion. However, however, um, the Sin Fathers um, brought up another aspect of conversion, which is what we call today. And Pope Francis, very, very, and uh, one of the favorite words of Pope Francis, pastoral conversion. So conversion in the, in the process of evangelization does not take place only at the individual, personal level, but also at the pastoral level, where uh, the Seal Fathers came up with a proposal that uh, we have to move from a pastoral strategy of maintenance to a pastoral position that is truly missionary. And you will see evangelical Jew, this is still, uh, it's still in this uh, 
how to challenge to be missionary disciples. And, uh, and this is what this is what previously means um, a pastoral conversion. From simply maintaining my faith um, to um, once again um, sharing my faith as a disciple, as a missionary. But since the pastoral um, conversion refers also to the structure. So that the evangelization guides us to an authentic pastoral conversion which, which moves us to attitudes and initiatives. So it's not simply word, but attitudes and initiatives which lead to evaluations and changes in the dynamics of pastoral structures. That uh, when you see this, a certain pastoral structure does not respond to the demands of evangelization, you've got to be uh, uh, ready to be able to be able to be able we have to go beyond this, the, the attitude of this is what we've been doing in the past, so we can be. So, uh, uh, confronted with these changed realities, um, um, we have to respond to uh, what the question, what are we to do? What, what have we to do at times? So this is what we call pastoral conversion. But then, the, all this work of pastoral personal conversion has to be grounded on the very foundation of evangelization, which is a personal encounter with so the Senior Fathers uh, to the message that the work of the evangelization consists in presenting once more the beauty and brilliantness of the encounter with Christ. Citing the present situation to the often distracted and confused-hearted mind of men of today, even today, and above all else of the And uh, so this week, uh, who is the Holy Spirit as a primary of evangelization, leading us to a personal and personal conversion, which is the which is rooted in our personal encounter with Christ, we can say comes out of uh, consists of the main um, uh, direction of the new evangelization. That personally I I summarize it this way. With the Holy Spirit, we get out of the box, the past of conversion. But when we go out of the box, we cannot just get out and be and float around. When we get out of the box, we go back, we go back to Jesus and the apostles and the first Christian community. Recapture the spirit of the first of the evangelist in the first hour, the urgency, the enthusiasm to proclaim the word in season and out of season. And then live that spirit today in new forever, new methods, new expressions. Then the evangelization doesn't become simply a fact. The evangelization doesn't simply become a fashionable strategy of the church. But it becomes really the life of the church in this present situation of changing realities. Because if you want to die in India, Number less than the new guy. I say new members will express your new, new fervor. Without grounding ourselves to our encounter with Christ, then we will still see what happens, what we don't have, what we upload. Simply in the new guy, also. Okay, so it's good, so it's good. And we ourselves are just being brought up from this fun, from this trend of uh, the new media. Very important our approach in communication always have had this uh, consciousness that it is grounded on our faith and on this uh, challenge for, for the followers that we have. So, if we encounter Christ, we will encounter Him as the perfect communicator, as communion progression way back in the 70s that so we uh, had intended for us to to defend. Jesus is the perfect communicator. And that Jesus is a perfect communicator, he, came, he communicated the perfect message, or one of the best, the, the, the central truth of our thing, which is the mystery of the Blessed Trinity. And in the Mr. Blessed Trinity, we find that God, our God, who communicates. Our God is a communicating God. And this God who communicates, he communicates in the three persons that he is. And this communication leads to communion. Ina mo po talaga ang communication. 
communion. But if you look at communication that is developed, that has been developed in terms of human enter and endeavor, our communication, human communication, does not reach the goal of communication, which is communion. Kaya nga, kaya nga nakikita natin, the more technology we are, we have, the more is communication we experience. And so, to the divine revelation of this triumph God, He communicates Himself in the world and with the human persons who iterated unto His image and likeness. That's why, from here, we can choose what the communication studies uh, already we always uh, uh, cry out. We cannot not communicate. Do you know what? Tumayo lang kayo sa loob ng elevator. Ang pagkatawag kayo ito. Nakatayo lang kayo. Umaan ka ng elevator. You already communicate. We cannot not communicate. Sa LRT, sa mga kayo sa LRT, siksika na siksika, hindi na doon na tulusan, pero you're communicating. Pwede tumatang yung braso mo sa akin. So we cannot not communicate. Why? Because we are images of God who continuously communicates. Kaya communication is not simply a human activity. It's really part of our unique images of God who communicates continuously. And uh, the self-communication of God to us is carried out completely in what we call evangelization and catechesis. And, uh, the evangelization has, uh, uh, has been given to us to continue to for, for the revelation of God to be continuously be transmitted. And catechesis is an integral part of evangelization. That's why Jesus found the church in order to evangelize and to catechize. So, this is the first and so, uh, and so in, the, in the church, we have this levels of communication from intrapersonal, our self-reflection, introspection, interpersonal, group, mass, and today we call now new and social media, the church evangelizes and advertises. So let's just bear in mind that the uh, that uh, all this, uh, what we're having now, these modern means, are part of who we are, communicators under the uh, created under the image and likeness of God. Para na lang, para para hindi kasi sa tingin at sa akin na tega mo na paano ba ako na ko communicate? Ano ba kita ko communicate? That's why communication is intrinsic to evangelization and catechesis, and for this we can come out with this certain solution. Uh, uh, Conclusions. The church is communication, evan uh, the church is evangelization, evangelization is communication. Catechesis is an integral an part of evangelization, is communication. <laughs> This, uh, this level in terms of communication. Put them together, then we will have an integral form of method of communication. And that is more holistic. Okay? Where you have experience and the message put together. Okay? And, uh, by, and finally, my last slide, the evangelizers and the catechists, therefore, are communicators not only in using technology, but primarily in their people. And that communication should be part of their spirituality. And then, in their knowing, we should know uh, something that it is and the evangelizer should have a basic know-how of communication studies and then the use of technology in communication. And now, I think we are about to continue this uh, trend of our reflection.
The church, I mean, uh, even Evangelical Neandi says, the church would feel guilty before the Lord if it failed to use the media for evangelization. And evangelization can actually start with a smile. So let's all smile to one another. Okay. Um, I want Mother Teresa said, um, peace begins with a smile. Just a brief introduction about myself. So I am Bob Lopez. I am from Anglicaya de Panginoon, and I'm also a, a part of the training pool of the Institute for Pastoral Development. I am now the mission director of Word of Joy Foundation, the publisher of the magazine that you have. Okay. So, Word of All Us uh, has mass readings, prayers, reflections, faith articles, and dis discussion questions. This is to support the BC and the parishes in their small groups. So we have discussion questions already uh, based on the Sunday meetings. So on the second page, you will see my face there. So let me start. Social media and the new evangelization. In the session, we will try to discover the deep and even do. I am trying to make it fast because this is usually a two-hour talk and I'm going to shorten it to one hour. Social media. When you think about social media, what comes to mind? Technology. Facebook. Yes. Pope Francis says, the internet offers immense possibilities for encounter and solidarity. This is something truly good, a gift from God. Therefore, inter internet is really a gift from God. So what is social media? If, uh, I checked many definitions, and these are the words that keep re repeating in the definitions. Interaction, conversation, communication, content, people, information, sharing, and online. To have a very short and simple definition, social media is media designed to be used and shared through social interaction. What is important is social interaction. We interact digitally, socially. Now let's look at the present mobile statistics. In the Philippines, the foremost is Facebook then Google. Why Facebook? First, before Google, Google would be for searches. Why? Because sometimes before we do, uh, do our research, we go to Facebook, right? Guilty rin ako dyan. Ilatin kayo like sa post ko. Or ilatin kayo like share ng post ko. Before I actually do my research. Okay, here in the Philippines, so yeah, Facebook, Google, PH, then Google, YouTube, Yahoo. ABS-CBN News, and Amazon, Blogspot, Wikipedia, and then Twitter. For the social platforms, meaning the social networks, you have Facebook as number one, and then you will see Facebook Messenger, because it's now a separate platform. And then you have Google+, Plus, Skype, Viber, Twitter. Viber makes um, long-distance calls through the phone obsolete, right? because we usually use Viber and even Facebook Messenger, then Twitter, Instagram, LinkedIn, Pinterest, and WeChat. Now, for the different social platforms, if you want to know uh, what platform to use, you need to know this. For Facebook, 55 are female, 45 male, 25% are 45 years old and above. Twitter, 50%, so male, female, same. 45%, 18 to 29. Uh, so, for the younger ones, Twitter is more um, popular. Okay. And then, why do they veer away from Facebook? Kasi ang mga low, low, low lang nila nasa Facebook na. They want to keep their activities secret. 
That's why it's also popular now the Snapchat kasi in a, in a few seconds mawawala the message. Also Instagram is gaining popularity with the younger ones. 16 to 24 years old. 41% of them are there. Okay? So since the media are often the only channels of information that exist between the church and the world, a failure to use them amounts to burying the talent given by God. So we need to use media for evangelization and for catechesis. Especially nowadays that even kids know how to use the mobile phones. Right? Before the nannies were TVs, now it's tablet phone. If the adult doesn't want to be disturbed, he began a tablet, he began a cell phone. Because he didn't have a phone. Right? Um, in psychology, that is not... Um, uh, he, he is uh, healthy, right? Because the best way for kids to learn is always through interaction, social interaction, not through gadgets. Even if there are very, very good educational games on the tablet or in, on other um, mobile gadgets, still, the best way for kids to learn is to social interaction through play. That's the best thing. And even now, we lose communication because we are together but we are not. Kanya kanya screen time. And now we see that churches are empty. Where are the youth now? They are in the internet shops. They are in front of computers. That's why if we need to reach, to, to reach out to the young, let us also use the 21st uh, century technology levels and approaches. Let's use digital. Like today's world itself, the world of media, including the internet, has been brought in Christ and placed in the service to the world of salvation. Even internet. All these things, all these technology can be used for evangelization. Are we all evangelizers? Yes. So uh, what do you think are the attitudes of evangelizers? I have three Fs. Give me three F's, words. You can shout from wherever you are. Friendly, family, friends, faithful. What, but what are the most basic characteristics of an evangelizer? Based on what Father Dex said, First, focus on God. Right? Next, you have to be a fervent prayer. Prayer. And you have to have fervor for evangelization. First, focus on God. Everything that we do as evangelizers should be focused on God. Every minute, every moment should be captured by God. But the problem nowadays is that the internet is full of what? What kind of images? Selfies, right? Personal images or a self-taken photo. That social media has become social media. In Facebook, we say like me. In YouTube, we say, watch me. In Twitter, we say, follow me. In Pinterest, look at me. But that is not the call of God. Pope Francis says, all of us are called not to communicate ourselves, but this existential triad made up of truth, beauty, and goodness. Again, not to communicate ourselves, but truth, beauty, Goodness. If you remember, recall all your posts, do they talk about truth, 
beauty or goodness. Sasabihin natin, beauty, syempre, beautiful ako, di ba? So, beyond that, but beyond that. Therefore, the first call of a digital evangelizer is to focus on God. Not just to have selfies, but to have God feeds. Images focused on God. So our posts, our blogs, our tweets must be people to Jesus. Next is fervent prayer. How often do we pray? Do we actually pray before we post anything? So then what? Because our goal is always to evangelize. If we go to a place and we want to post something, what, how is it connected to us as catechists, as evangelizers? We can just say, praise God for this creation. So you lead people to God and not just say, um, sorry, wala ka dito. Diba? No, it's all, it should always be God. But uh, again, fervent prayer. Let's always pray. Rejoice always, pray without ceasing, give thanks in all circumstances, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus for you. And you have many mobile applications that can help us in prayer. For example, we have in Ligaya One Touch Digital. It has prayers, it has mass readings, it has reflections. And then you have iBreviary. You don't need to use, uh, you don't need to bring the breviary with you, which is very heavy. You can use this. Or you can use Laudate, but Laudate is online. You have to be connected. iBreviary. If you just download for the whole week, then you can be offline. And then you have the Bible, the My Sword Bible, that's what I use. And then for Tagalog prayers, you have Kasan. Kasan. So again, everything that we do online should lead people to prayer. And lastly is fervor for evangelization. As catechists, do we actually think who can I lead to Jesus today? Or when we talk to people, when we encounter people, how can I lead this person to Jesus? When we, some, when we see a post from a friend, and um, you see, you read a post, and it seems like the person has a problem, how do you connect to that person? That's fervor for evangelization. That, you breathe it. You breathe it. Uh, you don't just breathe the prayer, but you breathe the evangelization. You breathe the passion to bring people to the Lord. To be a passionate evangelizer is to live and share the faith with lively interest and mark enthusiasm. So if they're online, let's be online. Okay. But I just want to stress here that nothing beats person-to-person, face-to-face evangelization. Connect with them online, but also meet them where they are. Nothing beats a touch. Nothing beats uh, a face-to-face -face prayer for the person. You can um, initiate conversation online, but still try to meet the person face-to-face. -face. That's the most effective. So, um, and our post was a people service, service to God. So, again, what are the three F's? Focus on God, fervent prayer, and fervor for evangelization. Now that we have the characteristics, the attitudes to take for, as uh, evangelizers, now let's learn how to use social media for evangelization. We are all called to the fishers of men, right? Right? Yes. Right. So if we are called to the fishers of men, then let us go fish. Let us go fish. Fish online. Fish is actually an acronym for friendship, images, 
sharing, and hope. First, friendship. Online, build Christ-centered friendships. Build Christ-centered friendships. Worldwide, there are 1.6 billion users of Facebook online uh, in the world. In the Philippines, there are 48 million Facebook users. How many are we Filipinos? 100 million. And 48, almost half, are on Facebook. Imagine the expanse. Imagine the the tool, the reach, yes, the tool that has been given to us as Filipino evangelizers. We can reach 48 million. Or 48, 47.85. Kasi, And um, there are 646 million Twitter accounts. And did you know that there are 58 million tweets per day. That's per day. And then, um, so that means 9,000 tweets per second. And this is last year. Imagine the tweets during major events, during the people visit, during elections. Amazing how social media has won the election for us. To bring down people and to bring up people, people voted based on social media. I believe. There were so many lies that were told during the election. And based on those lies, people were elected as officials. Because of, um, so there were, again, there were, there were polls that brought up people, there were polls that brought down people. Whether true or not, people, Filipinos believed in the polls. Jesus and social networking. This is the reason why we continue to do social networking because Jesus succeeded in social networking. So Jesus started with his disciples. And then from his disciples, we now have a church. And that is social networking. From 1 to 12 to millions. Millions. So if we are in any social media platform, we are connected to people. And um, if we're connected to people, every post that we have, for example, we have um, 50 friends, then those connections, those friends who are connected to other friends. And these connections would be Millions and millions of connections. So one post can actually reach millions. For example, if you have 150 friends, so those 150 friends are connected to, if they are connected to 150 friends each, then we are connected to 10,000 friends of friends. And if those 10,000 friends of friends are connected to 150 friends each, then we are connected to millions. One post can reach their needs. The call, therefore, is to go into the whole world and proclaim the gospel to every teacher. And the whole world now also includes the internet, the world wide world. Oh, Benedict says that new communication technologies must be placed at the service of the integral good of the individual and of all and of the whole of humanity. If used wisely, they can contribute to the satisfaction of the desire for meaning, truth, and unity, which remain the most profound aspirations of each human being. He also says, unless the good news is made known also in the digital world, it may be absent in the experience of many people for whom this existential space is important. If for a, part, um, for a particular age, people of a particular age would think that digital world is virtual. It is real for people. So if you're not in Facebook, then somehow you are not present to them. If you want to be present to young people, you have to be present.
as yet also online. Because online friendship can be a venue for spreading the word. Uh, of course, we know Pope Francis has his, has his own Twitter account, also Cardinal Table. Ah, I, of course, I also have my own uh, Facebook page, and there I post Christ-centered messages. For example, this one, I do, I, um, I take pictures and then I create, convert them to images like this. So I place uh, text there. And this particular text, I'm focusing on this because this, um, a friend of mine saw this middle of the night and he commented, Bob, thank you for this message. She usually posts in the morning, but I was surprised he post, uh, posted something tonight because this actually means a lot to me because this meant that God has never left me at all. And since then, he started going to the Blessed Sacrament every day, would go to Mass every day, would serve his mother um, with joy because of this post. So you can post a lot of these images online. Or you can also install Bible-based applications. Did you know that Pope Francis became a rock star on social media because of this. This has been retweeted uh, not just uh, not just hundred thousand times, millions of times, and he became the most retweeted person during that time. And also because of social media, we can help people. Remember Ondoy? People were missing during Ondoy, but because of social media, people were found. And uh, you have Yolanda, you have different events even, that help people gather together and help others. But Pope Francis also says, it is not enough to be passers-by on the digital highways, simply connected. Connections need to go with the true encounters. You don't just connect. You connect because you want people to know God, to know Christ. So some social networking sites, of course you have Facebook, you have Twitter, you have Instagram, you have Pinterest, you have LinkedIn, you have Kakao Talk, you have Facebook Messenger, you have Viber, you have WhatsApp, you have Skype, and you have Snapchat. Um, you have many other games as well, like Pokemon Go. See that they don't have a Pokemon Go now. Hindi ng phone ko. Don't take ang phone ko. But uh, that has been a fact. In a few weeks' time, it has 4 million installs. 4 million worldwide. And you would see people moving around, just looking at their screens, chasing Pokemon. Uh, there, there is a bad, uh, there's a bad side and a good side. Bad side is, it is, I'm uh, sorry, downside, downside. There's a downside to that. Um, it has security risks okay? because it connects you to your Google account and camera and all. So you don't have that security, that pers uh, personal security, and then. On the good side, there are Pokemons in chapels, in churches. Yes, so you can actually, it leads people, it leads the young to the churches. Now it's up to you to capture those. You, they capture Pokemons, you capture them. Okay. There's, uh, again, there are two sides to that. So again, friendship. Build Christ-centered friendships online. Next. Images. images. Every image tells a story, triggers a memory, conveys an emotion, expresses an idea, and exhorts an action. Image is power. 
we all think as witches. Recently, it was discovered that um, when we read words, we don't read them as a clump, uh, as a group of letters. We read them as images. Uh, proof. When you're not sure of the spelling of the word, you try different ways of spelling it, right? And you check which looks good. Whatever looks good, then you choose that spelling, right? I'm going to say digital letters, check that as Google, but yeah. Because that's the way we see things, and that's the way we remember things. Jesus and images. Give me stories from the Bible or stories about stories of Jesus where Jesus used visual images. Good shepherd. As in he used as in literally used the child, right? What else? The boy, what else? 